Hello, everyone. This is Chaitali Bagh from the European Bureau of Aviation and Defense Universe based out of Cyprus. Some decisions of the Indian Army have created a strong buzz, not only in the ranks and file, but also in the common man. And one such decision is the one announced on this Army Day to change the uniform. The new uniform was unveiled and since has been a topic of debate. And we at ADU also wanted to know more about the why and what of this announcement. For this, we have in our chat room retired Lieutenant General Vinod Bhatia, former DGMO, DG Infantry, and Colonel of the Parachute Regiment, who promises to throw light on this issue. Welcome, sir. And now I request editor ADU Sangeeta Saxena to take the discussion forward. Thank you, Jatali. Uh, sir, what a lovely discussion to happen today because, you know, Army Day happened and uh, suddenly we saw, you know, the unveiling of this uniform and, uh, you know, today we are welcoming you for a discussion which is going to be on a very different uh, note on a policy of the Indian Army and uh, why the change was required. So, sir, we begin with it and uh, the, our ADU viewers, the first thing would want to know what happens to the glitter and the glamour of the olive green now, sir? Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Sangeeta Saxena. Thank you, Chetali. It's always a pleasure to be on the EDU platform. I always enjoy the conversations and uh, I'm sure this, this is an excellent uh, topic actually because there's something different. And uh, yes, you're very right. Uh, actually, this, this new dress, uh, which is a camouflage dress, is a replacement for the old camouflage dress. Uh, what we, not old actually, what we have it uh, right today. And the olive green remains. The olive green, of course, is the, our blood is also olive green for that matter. So olive green will remain as the uniform. Uh, however, as a combat dress, as a placement, uh, it was much needed, much needed, because uh, our combat dress uh, firstly was not uniform. It was not uni There was no uniformity in that uniform, actually. Everyone had a different type of a, a combat dress. And uh, not only within the army, but uh, I think within the country, everyone was wearing it. Everyone was wearing it, easily available in the market. And uh, it was poor quality. Uh, the men never felt the pride in wearing that uniform. Uh, it was uh, non-functional, let me be very honest with you. And uh, most of the uniforms uh, uh, company dress were not ordnance issue. They were bought by the men because the ordnance issue were uh, low quality and uh, re really unfit for, uh, you know, for, for soldiers. Uh, it, it hurt the soldier's pride in demolition in his uniform. So I think this is an excellent step. It is based on a concept of what they call the four C's. Uh, it is based on camouflage. It is based on comfort. It is based on climate. And it is based on confidentiality. Now the confidentiality thing is uh, very important because now, you know, when I wear this dress, it is me wearing it. The soldier is wearing it. There is a soldier of the Indian Army. So he'll get recognized by that. It's a, it is something which is scientifically done. And I think it's an excellent step forward. Uh, we've been talking about it for some time, uh, but no one had the, you know, it, it's a massive change actually, if you look at it. Uh, when 1.2 uh, million strong army changes the combat dress, uh, it is going to be a massive change over time and there's a transition period in the world. So I think it's a very good thing uh, for a big thing. And sir, but uh, you know, uh, one little factor which comes into the mind is that the color does not look green anymore. So the color, uh, doesn't it look like the camouflage dresses of other uh, countries' armies? or paramilitary forces, the new one? No, I, I don't really uh, think that because uh, you see, if we look at our operation, uh, operation environment, uh, the Indian Army is uh, the only army which functions uh, in the deserts, the coastal areas, the jungles, uh, the plains, and the mountains, and the altitude areas. You know, uh, also from plus 50 to minus 50 degrees centigrade. Uh, and uh, it's not easy to have a same uniform uh, which you wear in all types of terrain, in all climate conditions, in all operations of war, actually. Whether it is uh, counter-terrorist operations, whether the line of control or line of actual control, uh, or even if you're training in uh, in the deserts. So everything has to be a little, uh, uh, you know, uh, more comfortable. The comfort was not there. And uh, also the same dress was not uh, our old, our, our talent camouflage dress, which is being replaced now, uh, did not really serve the purpose of camouflage. Uh, camouflage, as we all know, is based on 6, S, and 1M. So where you have to merge with the uh, operational environment. And this has been very scientifically done. Technology has been used and digitally, the, it's a digital pattern. 
and it will merge in all types of terrain whether you're operating in the deserts or the jungle uh, it will be very beneficial and also in the high altitude in the mountains so i think we are moving ahead in a very uh, measured manner uh, it is much required because uh, we have to have a uniform of which is uh, suited to all terrains all operation conditions which is comfortable uh, to wear and affordable uh, it has to be comfortable also so and this uh, uniform i am given to understand uh, is warm in uh, uh, winters and cool in summers so it is very scientifically designed by the nift uh, so let us give it a chance i'm sure uh, we will succeed and the best part is uh, it is digital so it cannot be copied easily so it will have a qr code and it will have a barcode so you really can't copy it will come in 15 different sizes uh, so uh, i think we we are really uh, we done a very good uh, so some the indian army is taking a very good decision uh, going for this and sir uh, who's going to make the you know cloth so if it's a digital print but somebody has to make the cloth so is it going to be the ordnance factory board uh, so that you know just they have the rights and suddenly we don't realize you know that suddenly you'll find the market is flooded with small time manufacturers also making the same uniform uh, cloth so uh, is it is it going to be very specifically for the ordnance factories i honestly i really don't have any clarity on it uh, but i feel that it should be an open tender and uh, it should go to the you know we we have a open tender now the ordnance factories in any case are now been uh, copied split now split into seven to, yes split into seven this thing and I, i i see no reason why the ordnance factory should go to tailoring and you know the, something which is available outside in the open market why should the ordnance factories have specialization uh, and a captive uh, sort of a uh, you know market i i i think it will be incorrect the ordnance factory should be focusing on uh, the needs the ordnance needs i i say that again the ordnance needs of the armed forces rather than getting involved in you know st stitching uniforms and making buttons and things like that uh, you know today uh, the things are different it was quite once you know long time back in the uh, in the second world war in the 50s things were different so i i think we should go in for the best open tender and we should uh, there's a method to it and uh, we should go for the best even presently i, I uh, honestly the ordnance factory uniforms no one wears it and we all go to the civil market and get it stitched and uh, we pay a lot for the ordnance factory so, uh, you know each uniform costs 3000 rupees plus in the ordnance factory which you buy 1800 rupees in the, in the open market so that uh, there's a lack of uh, you know trust in the ordnance factory in any case and uh, like i said ordnance factory should go for ordnance and armament and not for you know things like uh, Uh, uniforms and all let it be an open market and let us go for the best and I, i'm sure we'll get the get a good price for it and uh, the transition will be there so the transition period will be good it will be issued to you know the frontline units first and later on it'll come to the knowing i produce you know a million uh, uh, uniforms uh, uh, you know uh, overnight it's not going to happen so i think ordnance factories should uh, stay out of it right and sir uh, you know all with all this change happening to the uniform uh, have you uh, have you heard a murmur amongst the you know soldiers from the fraternity uh, about uh, the validity of this decision no i uh, no i i i have not heard it i think I've, see but we uh, somehow when we made the counter address uh, the present one uh, that you know the, the shirt was outside that's why it had pockets on the side and then I, i don't know how it got chain and we started tugging the shirt in which is not really uh, required because you need, you need pockets to you know uh, put your stuff in a soldier carries a lot of burden uh, it's it's very heavy so he he needs to place it in convenient places where he can uh, utilize it properly and when required so we had gone wrong in uh, you know a, a few things and i think this correction was required uh, the soldiers would be very happy with it when if a soldier gets a lighter material a uh, better material uh, which is you know which is good in summers the cloth is better the fabric is much better the iron is much better looks better he feels pride in it so he he looks smart in this death. so this demo is very important actually you know, when you when you say that you want moral ascendancy over your uh, adversaries and when you when you walk in a uniform which is good you feel good about it otherwise when we even when we go for our uh, joint uh, exercise with other armies and we done hand in ten of them last year that's not true not 110 we kit the soldiers uh, very well but then we kit it over and above this and you know, we spend a lot of money from our regimental funds doing it now that will not be required 
so i i see uh, the soldiers would be very happy with it and I, I, i must also take a little bit of pride in it saying a personal thing uh, that the first contingent to demonstrate the paratroopers contingent in the navy day parade so uh, yes. there, there's a there's a there's a there's a connect there absolutely yes absolutely and sir uh, my last question to you sir is there a timeline for the fitting of the complete army is have you heard of something like that from the authorities a year or two or whatever no i i don't i, I have not heard of a timeline the only thing i know that this uh, trial started in january 2020 and within one one year the decision was taken and we must uh, also acknowledge the contribution of the nft uh, there were 15 of them working for one year including the professors and uh, even uh, they had uh, the alumni was also uh, you know brought in to get the thing done so i think it's a very, it's technically a very good thing. i don't I, i have no idea of the timeline uh, i'm sure they'll have a, a tra- transition management period and they would have it in them but it will depend on the contract the procedures and all unfortunately our procedures are very very lengthy and very laborious and, you know sometimes uh, they take a very long time uh, because of the financial constraints and the financial approvals fr things like that so i don't i don't know whether there's a timeline but yes uh, earlier the better uh, because the i i i found the soldiers looking very smart in it and uh, they're not only yes, smart they also look functional Uh, it is you know it is uh, the effectiveness will uh, take a quantum leap uh, un- unfortunately the best army in the world was the worst dressed army was in the world a camouflage right, yes. <laughs> yes thank you very much sir it was a lovely discussion on a topic which you know we were just waiting to understand you know everybody was talking and uh, there were murmurs of discontent oh why the change and some some saying oh the change is nice and now hearing it from you who's been an expert who's uh, you know uh, led troops for so long i'm sure you know people will be happy to listen to what you are saying so sir thank you very much wonderful speaking with you and we uh, now go back to our uh, studios in cyprus chatali must be waiting so okay sir right bye jain sir thank you very much jain thank you thank you so much sir it was uh, short and crisp but very nice to hear and uh, of course about the uniform and i'm sure uh, our next discussion will be more interesting with you thank you so much have a great day ahead sir thank you so much sir thanks ma'am bye and uh, all the people to you jai thank you sir bye right. jai